Hey everybody, I hope you are ready for a huge book haul. It's been a while since I've talked about the books that have come through my door and I cannot wait to share with you. There are so many books here, I'm gonna have to do this video in two parts, so we better get started. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. How are you all doing today? I hope you guys are well. I hope you're healthy. I hope you're safe. And as always, I hope that your reading is going well. Life has turned a corner here in this household. The dogs are back to being healthy, thank goodness. I'm feeling probably 90% better. The weather has been absolutely beautiful outside so i cannot complain about that and reading has been going very very well so that has always been a plus work works a bit crazy to be honest with you but hey it has been good and i cannot complain in the long run and i've had a lot of books show up that i am so excited to tell you about it's been a while since i've done one of these so there is quite a stack i have to tell you so get out your pen get out your paper get out your goodreads however you keep track of your tbr if you are so able please order these books from your local independent bookstore or if you're a library user get your library to get these copies to you as soon as possible now i've separated it into three sections i'm going to do some general fiction and then i'm going to do some non-fiction and then I have a fantasy section at the end. And I'm going to do my best to get through all of the plots. I apologize. I may have to read a few just because, you know, I don't remember everything in this little old login of mine. But I am super excited about all of these titles. So I cannot wait to tell you about them. So my friend Ryan, who I host the Spilling Tea Book Club with, which we are loving, and if you are so interested to join and read the books with us and then join our Zoom call, we are happy to have you. It has been a lot of fun. We are actually in the process of reading the sixth, bun sixth book, six months running, so super excited. But he introduced me to this press that I had never heard of called Dean Street Press. And I believe they're originally a UK press, but they do have a location here in California. I believe they have someone that works in San Francisco, so you know, all over that. And um, Brian recommended me a book, so I went and requested it from Dean Street Press, and they were kind enough to send it to me. I love them so much. They focus on women's literature a lot. They have a lot of reissues of books from the 40s, the 50s, the you know, the, that time period. They have a whole entire section of women mysteries. Um, yeah, so it's super exciting. But Nothing to Regret by Carola Oman is the one that they sent me, so thank you so, so much because this book speaks to the heart of my reading soul. Of course, this is about a woman in her 30s, unmarried, living a life on her own in a small English town. She lives without her family and she's enjoying the people she lives with. She has a community. This is about that little township. It also has to do with the war that is going on. And um, London is about to be bombed. So her niece, I believe, and her sister-in-law, um, her widowed sister-in-law, come to visit her to escape the bombing in London and become part of the community that she lives in. All of that sounds exactly like a Russell book, so I know it sounds like a lot of books that you guys will love. And I'm going to talk about some of the books that I bought myself in my part two because they just truly, truly speak to me. So that's Nothing to Report by Carola Oman out from uh, Dean Street Press. You guys can get your hands on that one now. Okay, this book was sent to me from Knopf by my friend Matthew Sharapa, and it is called Payback by Mary Gordon. Now, I've been trying to do this summary in my head. Um, I can do part of it, but there is some of it that I feel like I'm leaving out a few of the details. But this is very much a now novel in a lot of ways. This is the story of Quinn Archer, who is a reality TV star, and she does a show called Payback. And she has a history. Her fans don't know that she has a past, that she was actually a young girl named Heidi. She um, has a, a story, a dark past, and only one person, a woman named Agnes, who is her art teacher at a New England girls' school in the 70s, knows what really happened to her. 
what happens is Heidi had visited the Museum of Art in New York City, where an older gentleman picked her up. And um, Agnes's response to whatever in that situation sort of formulates who both of these women grow up to be. And it says here that Gordon narrates this tale of Me Too misunderstanding from a time before there was language to contain it, with a sharp sense of life's changing tempo. She takes us through Heidi's disappearance and reinvention as Quinn, and Agnes's escape into career and family in Italy, exploring their choices and potential for happiness until, inevitably, they meet again. Payback is a remarkable book about the precise weight of our words and deeds from a writer whose moral vision is deeply rooted in subtlety. So I think that sounds really interesting. I like the sort of the play and the juxtaposition of the modern time with how things were dealt with or discussed in the 70s. I think that's going to be an interesting discussion. So that's Payback by Mary Gordon, and this is out now from Pantheon Books. I know I said Knopf. That's wrong. It's Pantheon. Payback, Mary Gordon, Pantheon books. You can get your hands on it right now. Okay. The next book came to me from Scribe Press. You all know how much I love a fictional retelling of an author's life. Hence, In Love with George Eliot by Kathy O'Shaughnessy. And I just love a good old O'Shaughnessy last name too. This is a reimagination of the life of Marianne Evans, who is George Eliot. It talks about how she sort of was an outcast in her life. She was writing um, in secret under the name George Eliot. And as sort of fame found her and they determined who she was and that she was really this person, how that sort of turned everything on its head. And then once her husband passed away, other decisions that she makes sort of put her back into that um, gossipy, gossipy limelight. So one, I think this cover is absolutely gorgeous. And you know, I've only read, let me see, what George Eliot have I read? Middlemarch, Silas Marner. Um, I know I've read more than that. Come on. Those are the only two that are sticking in my head. I know that's not right, um, but it's been a while since I've read some George Eliot, but I do love a book about an, an author. You know how it is. So that's In Love with George Eliot by Kathy O'Shaughnessy, and this is out from Scribe. This book is actually out too. I think it's been out since June, so you can get your hands on it too. So if you're like me and you like a good book about an author, go get it. You can get your hands on it. Um, I'm actually really excited for this short little novella, Power Punch of a Book is what I think it's going to be. And that's Rest and, um, Rest and Be Thankful by Emma Glass. Now this is coming out in December of 2020. I think this cover is just beautiful. So this is the story of Laura. She is a pediatric nurse and she, you know, nurses have one of the toughest jobs. My mom was a cardiac nurse for years and years and years, and it is an exhausting job. And there's a lot of dealing with emotions and loss and all that kind of stuff. And so Laura is getting burnt out. And it says here, her hands have been raw from washing as long as she can remember. When she sleeps, she dreams of water. When she wakes, she finds herself lying next to a man who doesn't love her anymore. And there is a strange figure dancing in the corner of her vision, always just beyond her reach. Dark yet luminous, sensual, sensual yet chilling, written with a visceral, visceral rhythm and laced with dread, Rest and Be Thankful is an unforgettable novel that confirms Emma Glass as a visionary new voice. I'm really excited about this one. It's a short little thing. I probably should just hop on it. Um, um, but yeah, so that's Rest and Be Thankful by Emma Glass. You guys, it's blurbed by George Saunders. When you get blurred by George Saunders and you are a young new author, you're doing something right. So this is out from Bloomsbury in December. So thank you very much, Bloomsbury, for sending me this copy. I'm super, super excited about it. Cannot wait. Okay, so the last in the literature section is a um, book that is coming to us from New York Review of Books, who I absolutely love. They do such great things. And I read about this book in Publishers Weekly, and I hadn't I just haven't read a lot of translated literature from China, but when I heard about Peach Blossom Paradise by Ji Fei, translated from the Chinese by Canon Morris, Morris, I'm hoping I'm saying all of those names right, I thought it sounded fantastic. 
but it's a little bit complicated, so I'm going to read it to you. It says, in 1898, China experienced 100 days of utopia after a cabal of reformist intellectuals persuaded the young emperor to enact sweeping changes intended to modernize the country and bring about the great unity. Their movement ended in blood and the crowning of two more dictators, but not before it whetted an appetite for revolution all across the country an appetite that would eventually consume millions of lives. One such life belongs to, and I don't know how to say this name, X-I-U-M-I, -I, the young daughter of a wealthy landowner and former government official who goes insane over a painting then mysteriously disappears. Days later, her mother welcomes to the estate a young man who carries a grand but brutal vision in his heart and a gold cicada in his pocket. When his plans collapse, she inherits his vision just as she herself begins fighting the Confucian social norms that view women as property. There's so much more to it. I think it sounds fantastic. I think it's going to be epic. I believe this is part of a trilogy. It says, yes, the Yangtze trilogy, which includes Peach, Blossom, Paradise, I Dreamed of Mountains and Rivers, and Spring Ends in Jingham. Um, and he won the 2015 Mao Dun Literary Prize. So I'm super excited about this, guys. I'm so, I just think it sounds fantastic. So that's Peach Blossom Paradise by Ji Fei, translated by, from the Chinese by Canon Morris. So, and this is coming out oh, I, December 1st, 2020. So you guys can get your hands on that. Okay, so we're going to go into some nonfiction, guys and gals um and all three of these sound amazing but for very different reasons so the first one was sent to me by hatchet books who has a new imprint that is coming out where they are fun 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 <laughs> focusing on nonfiction. And this one is The Queer Advantage, Conversations with LGBTQ Plus Leaders on the Power of Identity by Andrew Gelwicks. And this is just came out. It came out on the 13th, so you can get your hands on it. I've read bits and pieces. This is one of those books that you can put by your bedside and flip through it, because what he does is he has different conversations with different types of gay leaders from athletes to um, people in business to people who make television and he just sort of has these conversations and you should sort of you can sort of pick and choose which ones are really just interesting you read some people you don't know um, I of course was immediately drawn to Billie Jean King because I'm a huge tennis fan and I'm a huge Billie Jean King fan there's a great conversation with Adam Rippon um, and there's there's just all sorts of really different interesting things that you guys can sort of dive into George DeKai's in here. I believe, let me see if there's anyone else. Margaret Cho, you know, Shangela. Yeah, there's all sorts of gay icons in here that have conversations. So that's the Queer Advantage, Conversations with LGBTQ Plus Leaders on the Power of Identity by Andrew Gelwicks. And this is out now from the Hatchet Group. And you guys can get your hands on it. The next book, we're going to go for a... Um, a graphic memoir. I'm always, I always love a good graphic memoir. And this is The Times I Knew I Was Gay by Eleanor Cruz. And this is out from Scribner. And this is exactly as it sounds. This is, she originally, I believe, published this as a zine, a hand stitch zine in the UK in 2017, I believe. And now it has come to the US as this beautiful, hardback, gorgeous little book. And her art is so fun. I just think it is so fun. So I'm super excited about this one. I don't think this will take a lot to read, um, but I, I just feel like it's going to be one of those books that makes me smile. So the, time, the Times I Knew I Was Gay by Eleanor Cruz out from Scribner Press. I believe this is out now. I apologize. I didn't I didn't check that, but I do believe you can get your hands on this one as we speak. Now we're going to go over to my friends at Catapult, who you absolutely know I love. And they published this nonfiction book. It came out this week as well. And that's White Tears, Brown Scars, How White Feminism Betrays Women of Color by Ruby Hamad. And I'm going to hold that up there for you guys so you can get the full title. And this is a, a history of the... I'm just going to read the back. It says, This explosive book of history and cultural criticism 
argues that white feminism has been a weapon of white supremacy and patriarchy developed against black and indigenous women and all colonized women. It offers a long overdue validation of the experiences of women of color, taking us from the slave era when white women fought in court to keep ownership of their slaves through the centuries of colonialism when they offered a soft face for brutal, brutal tactics to the modern workplace. White Tears, Brown Scars tells the story of white women's active participation in the campaign of oppression. Um, I think this is going to be powerful. I think this is going to be very eye-opening for myself and for probably a lot of readers. Um, and I think that it's going it's going to start conversations. And I think all good books start conversations. So that that's White Tears, Brown Scars, How White Feminism Betrays Women of Color by Ruby Hamad, out now from Catapult Books. I think I may put this one by my bed too and read like a section at a time and sort of uh, use my pencil and my notepad to sort of take notes as we go through it. Okay, now let's do some science fiction and some fantasy people. Gosh, I, this video is gonna be a little bit long. I apologize. Um, once, um, the Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. You guys may know her for writing, oh, I always forget the full name of it, The 10,000 Doors of January, which was very big. I think it was nominated for a few awards. It may be up for a Hugo if I'm not mistaken. Um, this is her next novel, and it is coming out. Actually, I think it just came out. It came out October 13th. You guys can get your hands on it. And this is set in 1893. It's about a three, um, whist, three sisters who are witches, and they join the suffragists in New Salem, and they begin to pursue the forgotten words of witchcraft in their fight to get the ballot box. Um, open to women and um, the vote, the right to vote. So I think that sounds really fun. I think it sounds like something we can really dive into. And I love the premise. I just absolutely love the premise. So that's The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow out now from Red Hook. You guys can get your hands on it. If you guys liked A Thousand uh, Doors of January, might as well dive into her next book. Why not? Support her. They need it. Okay. Now, Tor.com is doing this Tor Essentials reissues, where they are reissuing these fantasy classics. Now, this is, I think, one of the first ones that's coming out, and that's The Dragon Waiting by John M. Ford. It has a new introduction by Scott Lynch, and this is out. You guys can get your hands on it right now. I did not know a whole lot about this book. One, I love this cover so much, um, but I read a review of it somewhere, and it what sounded fantastic. Now, you know I'm all about a fantasy novel that is a quest with a group of unruly people that aren't supposed to be together or a group of people that are all over the place but really have a common mission. So in a snowbound inn high in the Alps, four people meet who will alter fate. A noble Byzantian mercenary, a female Florentine physician, an ageless Welsh wizard, and soft, 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 blah, blah. Sorfza, I'm saying that name wrong, the uncanny duke. Together they will wage an in intrigue-filled campaign against the might of Byzantium to secure the English throne for Richard, Duke of Gloucester, and make him Richard III. Tell me how you guys would do the sound. S-F-O-R-Z-A. I, I, in my head, cannot figure out how to do S-F. I just can't, so I apologize for that name. But that is The Dragon Waiting by John M. Ford. Everywhere that um, when I posted this picture on Instagram, people were so excited to see it out and about again. So again, that's The Dragon Waiting, John M. Ford, Tour Essentials. Get your hands on it right now. I'm excited about this book as well. I don't know how, a whole lot about it, but I have to thank Orbit for sending it to me because I was such a fan of the Witcher series and the TV show, The Witcher, that was just out. And this is the new book by that author, The Tower of Fools by Andrzej Sapkowski. Um, my Polish is very poor. You guys know that from trying to pronounce Olga's name all those times. This is translated by David French. And it says that Rymer of Beloa, sometimes known as Rivenian, is a doctor, a magician, and according to some, a charlatan. And when a thoughtless indiscretion finds him caught in the crosshairs of powerful nobility, he is forced to flee his home. 
I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic adventure. He is so good at creating worlds and people and magic. I think it's just going to be super fun. So if you liked The Witcher or like things like The Witcher, I think this book will speak to you. So that's The Tower of Fools. This is out, comes out at the end of October, guys. I think it comes out on the 27th of October from Orbit Books by Anne Drez Sabkowski, translated from the Polish by David French. So there you go. Okay. Last but not least is a book that is coming out again, December, I'm sorry, October 27th, and that is Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie, and I'm going to hold Carrie's last name up there for you, Man is Scalaco, that is completely wrong, and I'm sure it sounds beautiful, um, and I'm a huge fan of the Jimmy Patterson imprint at Little Brown. They brought um, Girls of Paper and Fire to me, which I am extremely thankful for. And they have sort of a uh, way that their covers are done that I just find so amazing. But this is the story of two twin sisters. They both have a sense of magic and they live together and they're very much, very, very close. But one night, one of the sisters misses dinner and it turns out she has been murdered. And the other sister has gone and now has decided she's going to find who the murderer is. She's going to seek that murderer out, even if she has to start to use dark magic. She winds up meeting a um, wraith. I think that's the character's name, who is one of a group of people called the Wicked, who is a prince of hell, I believe. And he offers to a sister. He says he has been put out there in order to um, solve the murders of all of these innocent women. However, you never know with the Wicked. Nothing is uh, as, as it seems. So does that not sound like a fantastic book. So that's Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscolco. And I keep, I want to, Maniscalco. That's how I say it in my head when I read it. I am so sorry, Carrie. And this is out from Jimmy Patterson Books by Little Brown. You can get it in your hands on October 27th, 2020. That is quite a stack, and this is quite a video, and I had to split it in two, so you guys know why I had to split it in two now. As always, I want to thank you guys so much if you are a return subscriber. I could not do this without you. If you are new to my channel, I hope you stick around. I hope all of these books wind up on your TBR. As always, I encourage you guys to shop locally, read globally, and until next time, I wish you happy reading. Talk to you soon, guys. Bye!